Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Penn, and we're just going to continue the review process of the Rocktech G2. Now, if you notice, the setup is a bit different. I do have two 4K televisions within this office space, so I am able to give you a review with different features, if a device supports HDR10+, or if the device has Dolby Vision, I'm able to cover both. So, this is not on my home theater setup or the main setup. So, here's the thing. I go to device preferences, I go to display and sound, and I go to HDR settings. As you can see, this is the LG C2. Grab my magic remote. This is my main PC monitor that I have as a television for my work from home setup and for YouTube. So this is box advertised Dolby Vision. So I have it enabled. Uh, by default, it has Dolby Vision source LED and then Dolby Vision sync LED. So default is that source. So I'm just going to leave it at that. <clears throat> now, in the last video, I talked about when I was playing Adobe Atmos, when I had it hooked up to my Samsung um, home theater setup with the Nakamichi, that the audio was dropping out in Adobe Atmos, and it did not properly play DTSX MA. It uh, sent it as PCM as a two-channel mode, so that's definitely not good. Now, here's Nova Video Player. In essence, it's a video player to play back your media files. It's simplistic. Everything that you would need would be over to the left-hand side. You can browse by year, collections, genre, things like that. So, previously I showed the direct attached storage method. I was using an application and a media player called Kodi. Very powerful media center, by the way. In this example, I'll be using Nova Video Player. Now, for those of you uh, that are still looking to purchase this device just to try out, um, in case you use examples like these, um, one of the things that you have to keep in mind is, if you plan on having this hooked up to your soundbar, surround sound setup, AV receiver, there's some things you want to keep in mind. I want to go into preferences. And with Nova, you want to allow pass through and you want to hit mode two. If you hit mode one or disable, most likely you will not get that Adobe Atmos or that true HD 7.1 signal to your setup. So you want to be in mode two and you want to force audio pass through. From here, you want to enable automatic refresh rate switch. Device support may vary. They put that there because, well, that's what it is. Um, I've reported that the automated refresh rate switching wasn't working correctly from the get-go because um, I was able to see my input signal on the Samsung when I had it there. And it was still playing things at 60 frames per second when it should have been playing at 24 frames per second. So I'm just going through this. Um, a lot of this stuff is going to be default. I'm just little, you know, rambling a bit, but pretty soon we're going to get into the main thing. So I will be showing off the network, um, network streaming within your own network via a network attached storage. Uh, so for here, a lot of users in uh, the audio and video space, core cutters or streamers, they're going to be doing one of two things um, that they have their own local media content. A lot of people are not going to be playing things from the cloud 100 percent or have a hybrid setup such as me. A lot of you are just looking to do things locally. Well, one of the ways you can do it is via your network. So. I'm going to access it here. I've already put my password in, so I didn't have to pause the video or anything like that. But let's test it out. 
you know, so can this device handle the streaming media? Uh, let's let's do a demo. Um, actually, let me turn this volume down on here on the TV. See that volume breaker on the right side. <clears throat> um, let's do Dolby True HD. You know, let's do it. Let's see if it uh, it reports it. No, actually, I do need to turn it up because I need to hear if the volume is going to cut out or not. Now this is on my LG. Let's see what it do. Uh, let's do. Let's do Leaf. Let's play that. Let's see what it do. All right, Dolby Atmos. Turn that up for the video. Move this out the way. All right, that's better. Uh-huh. There was a cutout. Yup. You see that that Adobe Atmos flagged again. Caught that one. Cut out again. Okay, so I'm gonna back out. So on video, we literally witnessed on the LG C2. The right tech plugged directly into the television. Dolby Atmos enabled, and there's still cutouts when you're playing your Dolby True HD. So what does that mean? It eliminates the whole, oh, well, you have it plugged into a soundbar or AB receiver or there's some troubleshooting. No, this is plugged directly into the television. So <clears throat> what's going on is that this device just doesn't properly play the Dolby as it should. That's exactly what I'm talking about. I'm gonna do Dolby Shattered. And I'm gonna turn that up actually. Turn that up. You won't just hear glass break. You'll hear a slightly battered and bruised baseball fly past your right ear. As a cloud of debris blooms and shards of glass trail overhead. Just before gravity takes hold, scattering chaos to the four corners of the room. While the sound of a scared little kid running like hell fades away in the distance. All right, have to pause the video. I'll do a little bit of business. All right, so in that second demonstration where I played the Shatter Dolby Atmos demo, you saw that the audio cut out twice in that example as well. So it seems to be, uh, and I don't think it's the hardware, you know, maybe it's some sort of, I don't know, like maybe it's not true. Um, HDMI 2.1 it is it, kind of confusing uh, to be honest but I'm gonna play this last example this is Adobe Amaze this sounds very good on a sound system surround sound this will really uh, test your subwoofers at a certain point too on the TV uh, you won't really hear the, the major effect but we're just testing for the dropouts at this moment <laughs> there we go. <laughs> that part right there will literally shake your whole house. 
on, on the setup. It's kind of wild. <clears throat> okay, so it did better on that example. Now, I'm not going to lie to y'all. Um, on the previous video, YouTube did detect like a copyright footage when it comes to one of my anime videos. And I told YouTube to delete that part of the video so that it can actually be visible to you all. So I do have, as you know, I have one movie content. Oh, no. This isn't my Western Digital. This is my NAS. So, uh, these are the examples. Uh, yeah, I, I really don't want that smoke from YouTube because they're sort of like pissy about these type of things. However, um, if you're still watching at this point and if you send me an email, um, if you want to see if this thing can play 4k uh, smoothly to your expectations based off of what you see from me um if you're not convinced the main thing that's going on is that if you hook this up to a television a soundbar or a receiver there's definitely something going on with the dolby atmos um, that's for sure because this device on the amazon page it promotes the ultimate streaming experience it promotes a lot of that and it can't be the ultimate experience if you don't have uh, automatic refresh rate sw switching in certain applications and it's working. And if you don't have um, your audio right, <laughs> I mean, like that has to be right. Uh, let me see. Let me do an HDR. No matter of fact, I'll do Adobe Vision since it supports it. And I'm going to look at the VR. Let's see. Perfect one. Is there any way to get the frame rate on this? Let me see. Nah, uh, I'm not sure which. There we go. So this is 24 uh, FPS. So let's play this. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to mash the VR. Now on LG, you are about to experience a revolution in entertainment technology. Plays Dolby Vision. The fusion of Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos transforms your TV into an entertainment powerhouse. Dolby Vision is cinema HDR that brings TV to life with dramatic imaging, astonishing brightness, color, contrast all right I, i'm gonna stop that there um the vrr information on the lg oleds have been reportedly broken um but i can even go as far as show this so what i'm going to do here is that <clears throat> um i'm going to make a transition over to mb okay and then I'm going to show you in the MB, it doesn't even have the match resolution or the match automated refresh rate as MB normally has those two options. Similar if you, if you were on a Plex or a Kodi, MB just doesn't have the options at all. And I'm going to show you that. All right, I got the camera close to the screen, but watch as I scroll down. No options. Usually there's match resolution, <laughs> match frame rate. It got the other options, but these are non-existent. Crazy. All right, so I cut to this. So this is the Batman. And once again, um, since this isn't like one of my official TV review videos, I'm trying to minimize the amount of actual, um, movie studio footage that I'm showing during these media player reviews, <clears throat> only because YouTube is tricky about that. But this is, um, on the cloud. Um, 
it, it, it won't have an issue playing like live TV, YouTube HDR, or even like more compressed 4K content. Things like anime and all that, that's fine. Things get tricky when it's playing from the cloud on this device because the video started stuttering a bit. It starts to uh, freeze up. Um, the audio is playing, but it's cutting out. Similar to the examples that you heard earlier in the video. Like I said, uh, if you want me to send you a private video on how these 4K files play, I'm not talking about no 5 gig to a 15 gig. I'm talking about 50 gig to 100 gig plus. And your network has to be tight. It has to be on point um, if you're going to go this route. And um, and if you're doing it local, then it's based off of the hardware and the software. And then if you're doing it with the NAS, it's going to be that plus your network and the settings and all that, your equipment as well. So, but email me. Uh, all my information is down in the description if you want to get like a behind the scenes of this as well as if you want to set up your own media library whether it's in the cloud or locally or if you want a hybrid approach which is what i have currently um i can definitely get you up and running all in all <clears throat> it's a google certified device um other applications like Voodoo, Spotify, those are going to run Netflix, you know, things like that. Anything that's not using like a ton of bandwidth, I believe this box would be perfect for like an office, a bedroom, a living room, a more casual type of setting. But once you get into the serious stuff or you want it in a dedicated media room or a home theater, that's where this thing gets a little spooky. And I'm just being honest, it, it, it gets spooky. Uh, audio cuts out, uh, it says it supports DTS, but it doesn't do auto codecs. It says it's the ultimate streaming experience based off the website, um, but that's not here. So before I end this video, and I know I'm like pausing or cutting a lot, but I just want to get straight to the point with these. Um, now, the advertisement for this device also talks about, you know, hey, game streaming, you know, you can um, game stream or game in 4K, HDR10, HDR10+, plus, Dolby Vision at 120 frames per second. That's interesting. Because clearly that sounds like a direct competitor to the NVIDIA Shield. If you just read the advertising, you can tell that they was looking at the Shield as like an inspiration. But the performance uh, from a streaming perspective thus far is a, it's a bit lacking. Now check this out. If I go to screen resolution, right, in display mode, default is that 4K, 2K? You know, 60 hertz, right? Now, this is a Ruri Pro HDMI 2.1 cable plugged directly into the television from the right tech box itself. Where do you see 120 hertz at? <laughs> is this supposed to just magically appear? Where do you see 120 hertz? This only goes up to 60. So are they expecting you to use some sort of frame um, interpolation? Um, like what? Like to, to make it feel like 120? But based off of the advertisement, it said it promotes native 120 hertz. I believe that's false advertisement. I'm just being real. I just think it's false advertisement. And like, I think this is like a casual streaming box at best. That's at best. Um, like things like your TV mate or your live TV, things like free TV channels, it plays that with ease. YouTube music plays this with ease. YouTube plays that with ease. You, you get into the more demanding stuff. 
And video wise, when you're playing back your 4K content locally, like a movie, for example, the video, depending on your television and how you perceive motion and if you are affected by judder or not, the video is probably going to be a smoother experience for you. It's just that audio, those cutouts, and these cutouts have occurred on my Samsung S90C and 77. And you also heard and saw that it cuts out on the LG C2. So this is an example of a surround sound setup versus just a plug into the TV setup. And both options failed. It was consistent. It was consistent on both ends. So as far as I'm concerned, um, let me know what you guys think down in the comment section. Do you want to see more of this device or would you guys prefer just to email me and I can send you a private video? We can be in like a hangouts or a stream yard and then I can just show you some clips of some 4K content and then you can make the decision yourself. Ultimately, the verdict for me when it comes to this device <clears throat> is average at best um, when we're talking about a media player that's going to rival the NVIDIA Shield um, because of the performance. Now, if it actually lived up to expectations, the score would be a lot higher. My advice, save your money and get something else. When we're talking about streaming, purely as a streaming client, my advice, I would head into a different direction. All right. So this is Pan Side Out. Thank you for watching and peace out.